Hello, Shalom again. Um, we're still in the thirty, the double portion for the thirty-second and thirty-third um, sabbatical, which is uh, up here. The Rastafari Sabbath study, thirty-two and thirty-three, or the Hag in the Hebrew, the Masoretic scroll, and the Terara or Vesina. Vesina Terara in the Royal and Park Metrop Kedus of Nicholas and the Guest, or in the Book of the Seven Seals of the Imperial Majesty's Five and Haric Bible. Alright? And this is combined with this portion right here with the Kotai. Now, in the last part, we touched on righteousness, try to make the righteousness connection. What is the meaning? in order to get the proper act or application so we can know these things and we can act on them. This is very important. Some people think this is just about theological um, speculations. It is not just about theological speculations like so-called religions or churchical ones, anonymous Christians or others. No. This is about acting on faith or faith in action. But in order for faith to work for us, we have to have the knowledge of the truth. Beyond the knowledge of good and evil, when you get the knowledge of the truth, then you will know good and evil. So what's, what's really key is the knowledge of the truth. And in Yeshua, in Jesus Christos, um, his high priestly prayer, let's, let, let's get this and continue. Because we're concluding the book of uh, Vayikra, Vayikra, but the Holy Spirit just recalls to our mind um, John, John chapter 17. Let's go to John chapter 17 for a moment, and then we'll deal with the second part of this for 33. Now, it's interesting that Leviticus, the Torah portion for Leviticus, ends at 3 3 and that 33. This is this is very interesting. So we go to the book of Leviticus and we get to Leviticus, we get to the 33rd um, Torah portion, which is our Rastafari Levitical study. Now there was a book that I wanted to point out that I didn't have available and let's just show you this one again. This is um Falasha Anthology. Falasha Anthology right here. Right? Falasha Anthology. This particular book right here. Right, Felicia Anthology. It's a very, very interesting book. This is um, one of the um, translations from Ethiopic sources that, that states that the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, and we distinguish the Beta Israel of Ethiopia from I and I in the West, in the diaspora, who are the Falashas of the West. So we, as Ethiopian Hebrews and elect Rastafari, once we come into that positive identification of, of who we are in our our history, God's testimony in our history, you know, the scripture and actual history, we get to find out that we are Israelites, that we are Beta Israel, we are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we start to make those connections along the lines of our birthright, which is very, very important. I mean, this is for each of you. For each of us, each of I and I, to be fully convinced and fully persuaded of this. So we often like to encourage ones to continue to study, continue to dialogue, continue to reason. Now, when you have found the truth, and you will know when you have found the truth, you have to learn to act on the truth. In other words, to live within covenant, to live within the contract, to live within the Kal Kidan. And the Kal Kidan is the word agreement, the word agreement. So right here we go to John chapter 17. And in John chapter 17 we have what is um, subscribed as the prayer of intercession. And it begins and says, these words spake Yeshua, these words spake Yes, or whom, whom Western Christians call Jesus. These words spoke Yes and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, 
Abba, Abbat, Father, Abba, the hour is come, glorify thy son, honor thy son, show thy Shekinah, show thy Shekinah glory to thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. So it was glorify the son, so the son will glorify the father. So this this is a further testimony to the ma'at, or to the duality, you understand, that we find also in the Afro-Shemitic. So when we start to connect the mysteries and the wisdom out of Egypt and find that Moses was learned in, 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 the, in the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in word and deed, this is, this is the key to good, easy, Ethiopic study as well as good Egyptology. This is this is this is a very important key that many, even many in the so-called black consciousness, have missed because they do not have an independent source. They have ignored the Ethiopic sources, and they need to stop ignoring the Ethiopic sources, which is very interesting. This is why we when we used to talk about hard, from from hard we have Hora and Heru, and then that. Sina Tarara, the hard, you know, saying the hard is the mountain, and you know that a mountain or Tarara is likened to what 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 is is called a pyramid. You know, saying a pyramidical structure is a is a mountain. Now we know in scriptures that a mountain used symbolically or used according to the 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 mythology of the Bible. In other words, the parables are the mythologies of the Bible. We find that a a, a mountain signifies a, a kingdom or a government. And this is an interesting relation right here. But in continuing, verse two says, As thou this is this is the Moshiach's prayer, this is Christos's Christ Yeshua's prayer to his father, our father, he says, and this is the high priestly, leading to the high priestly prayer, he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, over all flesh, and um, this, this is very key for us to meditate, this is when we talk about meditate, meditate upon this, has given him power, authority over all flesh, this, this is the key towards healing, this is the key towards overcoming all of our so-called temporal or worldly and in the physical and carnal nature to, to turn to God, to turn to our Father Abba in the name of Yeshua. And this is why we continue to emphasize the role of prayer. Prayer and strengthening, prayer and preparation, prayer and breaking down obstacles. You understand? Know prayer and even the, 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 the self-confidence you see the self-confidence that many of us, though we might not admit it, the self-confidence that we need. You know, and really truly developing and building that relationship. So this is more than just words, because one doesn't make a contract or a covenant with words, but one makes a, a contract or a covenant with another. So this is where the scripture also speaks to us that there's, for us, there's one God and there's one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMashiach, that is the man, Jesus Christ. So we have to keep that, keep that in mind. Even His Imperial Majesty, and the teachings of His Majesty, I think this is very, very important for us as Rastafari, and I've, I've, I've sought to emphasize this, not just to others, but to also I, myself. And as I have moved in that, I see the incredible growth not even incredible, but it's very credible, you understand? But it's, in some sense, amazing, it's, it's awesome, in the sense the growth in my personal comprehension just by obedience, diligent and faithful obedience to the teaching of His Majesty. And this is something I have to highly encourage Rastafari, my fellow brothers and sisters in Rastafari, to really, truly consider the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. So when we talk about Christ here, Jesus here, Yeshua praying to the Father, right, and the Father being, 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 being reconciled with us, and we being reconciled with the Father, 
we being restored into the family of God, even even through the Father, is the kingdom authority restored. And this is the example we have in Ketamawi Haile Selassie. This, this is the, the revelation, but let's remind one that revelation is not doctrine. I have to emphasize this right here, that revelation, you're going to find I and I speak on this and, and teach on this a little bit more, because it's very important for us to gain a clear, a clear understanding of the fact that revelation, revelation, prophecy in other words, is not doctrine. Prophecy is not doctrine. Prophecy is the fulfillment, the manifestation of his word, of his verity, of his trueness. Remember, this is about the knowledge, not of good and evil, but the knowledge of truth. Here, here we come to that, that, that point right here. So, as thou, it's not Christ as the Son who has given himself power, but it's the Father, it's Abba. Abba has given Sultane or, or authority to Yeshua over all flesh. That means over all carnal, fleshy situations. Now, here's the, here, here's the thing you have to ask yourself, brothers and sisters. Although we read that, although we will say Amen and we will affirm that with our mouths and with our words and with our maybe consciousness, but do we truly amen? Do we have amen truly in that? You see, it's to strengthen our faith. You see, many of the works and the walks that we have to do as a people, we might think that, well, Babylon or this circumstance or that circumstance is preventing us or stopping us, but really it is our lack of, of belief, or let's just clarify, quote, end quote, is our lack of exercising faith, it's our lack of trust and true confidence or eifidence, as Rastafari can say, in this word, in spirit and in truth, in, in, in our true spirituality, that there's no doubt, you see, there's no doubt, so, so prayer and practice, and then the manifestation, which in our personal lives is like revelation, it confirms or it affirms the doctrine. It affirms the timhara. It affirms the teaching. All right? So here Yeshua says that he should give eternal life. So the Father has given Yeshua, the Son, the Son, the world, has given the Ab, has given the world power over all flesh that he, speaking of the Son, should give eternal life to as many as thou, as thou has given him. This doesn't mean that he has come to give eternal life to everyone, or that all would even accept and receive it. And see, this is when we really start to grow, when we recognize that we have received it, and hopefully we will receive it, and we may receive it, that truth, that, that, that true faith, that true application, but all will not. You understand? And, and this might stress some of you all out as you're trying to proclaim this truth to others as you have been able to graciously receive it. But as you grow in the teaching, you begin to recognize exactly why that is not up to you. That's not up to me. In other words, our responsibility initially, our, and each disciple, each brother and sister, everyone's responsibility is to decide, to, to make that choice. It, it says that um, many are called, few are chosen. And when I look at that in the language, and I meditate on that, the outer sense of it is correct, but there's an inner sense to it too, that, that many, in other words, the call goes out to the many, but only a few among those many to whom the call has gone out to really truly receive it, truly ask and seek and knock upon that door so that Christ, so that the true life and the truth will enter into their personal lives. So it says that, that he should give eternal life. So what is this about? This is about life eternal or eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So it implies that there's a relationship here. 
that there is a relationship, that as many as the Father has given to the Son, to these are given eternal life. But it's the Father who is the prime mover and the doer. This is the thing that has to be very clear. This does not, um, this does not um, belittle in any way um, Christ or the Son. But it's, it, it puts into proper context the message or the testimony of the Son. Because when we ask these questions, how come so many people are Christian or say they're Christian, go to church, so forth and so on, speak about Jesus, God, hell, damnation, all these things, but yet we have a world like we have. And yet we live in the, the conditions as, as, as humanity, as people individually, locally, nationally internationally, globally, like we do, is because of the practice. See, the practice makes it perfect, not forgetful hearing. And many have heard these words here, but have they truly have, 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 have they truly read them for themselves? Have they studied them? Have they, have they put them to heart? Have they memorized them? This, this is the key. And, and, and do they really meditate daily on them? You see, this is love. This is when we talk about the love of God. You hear many folks talk about God is God is love. Well, well, that is true. But yet, in the very same scripture, it says that that if we keep His commandments, you understand. And one of His commandments is to learn, is to study, is to know the truth. If we keep His command truly, we are in the love of God. You understand? We are in that relation, so we're building our relationship. You see, we're building our relationship right here. So, in verse three, it now says this. It says, "And this." It says, "And this, and this, is life eternal. This is life forever. That they might what know, that they might have gnosis, that they may have knowledge, that they may have." intimate fellowship. You see, when you know something, when you truly know something, no matter what anyone says, if you truly know something, you truly know it. Now, if you know something that is true, you can also point to the evidence. You have you have that evidence, you understand, of that truth. So, what we're speaking on here is, is knowledge, yes, but we're trying to show the connection with faith. And saying with with faith that faith is not just a word. In fact, um, brother Tariq Bey had had presented presented something to this effect that we want to show for a moment as well. Now, in the so-called uh, Masonic lodges, right? I, I want to put this right here. In the Masonic lodges, there are what they call three lights, right? Three lights, right? Right? Three lights. Right? There, there are three lights, right? There are three lights in the Masonic Lodge. I want you to get this, brothers and sisters, so you can understand some of what we call the process. You see, there, there, there's a process, there's a way. It, there's a way to go about this. There's a way to look at this. There's a way to progress. There's a way to proceed. There's a way to perfect. There's a way to overcome. So we have to learn, firstly, of that way. This is why I remind one to take notes, to study, you know, and, to, and also spend time in meditation. Spend time in memorization and meditation. See, first thing, this is hearing. You, you, you're hearing. We, we, we speak about these, these, um, these five keys. One is one is to hear. Right? Next is to read. Right? Then is to study. Right? Then is to memorize. Right? And then is to meditate. Right? Right? These these five you need to you need to jot this down. You need to write this down. The first and most important is the Shema. Is the Shema. Shema. 
Yisrael, Yahweh Zuchinu, Yahweh Ahad, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, this is translation here, the Lord thy God is one Lord. It begins off with hearing, Shema, that word of witness, that word of faith for all Beta Israel. Is to hear, right? And to hear also implies to obey in the sense that we as black folks say, you feel me? You, you hear you hear what I'm saying? You hear me? You feel me? In the sense of feeling is also implied. So we begin to learn that true faith, our feelings get to be reformed. Our feelings, the way we start to look at things, begin to change, begin to be reformed. Form, even becomes refined. We, we begin to have a refined appreciation for life, for creation, because we're beginning to hear. And then we're beginning to feel the word. We don't know it just yet, but the first step is that faith. It's impossible to please John without faith. So the first study should be what is faith? Now, here's the reason why we put this right here. Right? There's these three lights, right? These three lights, and these three lights also are practiced in in, in the collegiate and the college setting because um, it is it is it is a a, a it, there's principle to it. There's principle to it. The first thing is, is what they call belief, right? The first light is called belief. Now we know that belief. You know, we can say in the sense of belief, belief means to be lie you know? Some of us say belief means to be lie -y. And when you believe, you really don't know, right? Yet, do not cast that off because it's reality. You might not use the word belief, but you might be in the state of belief. What is belief beyond just the simple English, um, um, I want to say etymology of what is belief? All right. Now you have second candle is faith. Right? Faith. Now what's the difference between belief and faith? We find both of these words in the Bible. Now interestingly enough, the word um, belief, right? The word belief and the word faith in the Hebraic and the Afro-Shemitic languages like Amharic and, and good is or Ethiopic. The word basically comes down to the, a similar root, mamen, mamen or amen, where we get the word amen from, right? Yet the the, the senses that it's used, like well, the belief here is more like a noun. It's like an idea. It's even like an opinion, right? Faith. What's interesting. Faith is, is a working out process. Faith becomes more as a verb, right? Then, then thirdly, we have fruition. Don't worry, I'm going to go over this again. And Brother Tariq Bey, he, he reminded I and I in one of his lectures about this. And this is very interesting because here's what you have also in the so-called lives. You have the novice, the newcomer, has belief like has an idea. You understand? It could be a very zealous idea, but it lacks one key thing. It lacks knowledge. So this first can, this first step is the newcomer. You understand? It's, it's what the Bible calls the novice in Timothy. This is the newcomer, the novice. Right? At this particular level right here, this particular level is what's known as the scholar. The scholar has, has knowledge that now he's working out his faith, and then he's working out his his his, his theories. He's working out his his thesis. You know, saying even we can look at this as Trinitarian um, dialectics, falsely called Hellenic dialectics, where they have some say problem, reaction, solution. Others say thesis, antithesis, right? Antithesis, and this is synthesis here. Now. In the, in the order we have the novice level, this is the novice or the neophyte, this is the scholar, and now here is the master, this is the master level. 
and now it's at this particular fruition or master's level where you get your B, your 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 BA or your MD, your master's degree within secular or worldly um, institutions called colleges or universities. It's at this particular level, it's fruition. It's fruition. The fruition level is a master's degree. The you have the secondary one, which is the scholar's degree. This will be the disciple level. This is the discipleship level. It's faith, but not just the zeal or belief in zeal or an opinion, which is belief, but you now have a clearer idea based on knowledge, and now here's what we call applied sciences. Here, at this particular second level, or, or second step, is now faith in action. It's faith now crossing over to fruition. Now when you get to the level of fruition, that means you have you working out your salvation. You see something interesting in the Bible where it says, and we go from faith to faith. I thought that was interesting. Because some would read that in the Bible where it says we go from faith to faith. That do we go from one particular faith, like religion, to another religion? Is that what it's speaking about? No. It's speaking in the context of true Christianity, in the context of true Christianity, that we go from faith to faith. In other words, we go from the application of the hymenos, or the imminent, right? We go from the application of the imminent to the application of the imminent. So in various aspects of faith, you know what I'm saying, we have to work faith in, our, in the various aspects of our lives. So we have to become aware and acquainted with the Word. This is why the study of the Word, and many of us didn't grow up in, a, in, a, in an ideal situation where the, the Scriptures was a part, a major part of, of, of our childhood. Some of us did. Some of us had an opportunity, more or less, to become familiar. All of that is well and fear and good and all of that. But you have to begin again. You have to consciously, we call this the intentional disciple, one who intentionally says, you know what, I want to learn this for myself. I want to know the truth for myself concerning this. If one were to do that for themselves, if they would be amazed at what they would find for themselves, and there'll be less um, controversy, controversy, and we'll be able to focus on the real issues and work together, and then and work together. Because faith is also the key to our unity. You see, the faith is the key to our unity and our corporate activity, corporate working as as an organization, working as a church, working as a community, working as a mansion working as the house of Israel, as the Beit Israel, as working in our Father's house, we have to recognize there are many mansions. But each mansion, and those in every mansion, must be responsible. This is why you have a lot of folks that say, well, I'm in no particular mansion. I'm from mansion to mansion. That's irresponsibility. E either you're still seeking and searching, so forth and so on, but it's, it's like the, the thing they have in the world. You have to be in it to win it. You, know you have to be in it to win it. You can't be on the sidelines. Like I said, all non-participants, please get off of the field. The fact is, on the field, there are too many spectators and speculators. And that's the belief level. See, that brings us right back to the belief level. These have heard the word, and maybe barely read, maybe they've read a particular verse or two, but study, they most likely haven't studied. They feel, because they've read the Bible, that they've studied the Bible. How often have you heard folks saying, well, I've, I've read the Bible from cover to cover. I, I like to meet those folks. You know, I like when I meet those folks. I start to ask them certain questions. And they'll be like, oh, well, I don't remember that so much, but I, I read the Bible from cover to cover. And you know what I get from that? No, no, no. I, I, I want to know, like, did you really learn, what did you learn in the Bible? Not what you get from it. But what you get from it and what is in it is two different things. You know, and so we have those who have heard the word. This is why the word says to us, the scripture says, don't be a forgetful.
don't be a forgetful hearer of the word, but, but a doer, a doer of the deed. And see, the doer of the deed is the scholar's level, is the discipleship. One more thing to say, the student, the scholar's level is the faith. So remember, we said that this right here should be based on not knowing, lack of knowledge, usually opinion, usually maybe zeal, and some folks you have a lot of apathy too. We understand apathy, which is the opposite of zeal. But both of those are based on, on ignorance, on what they do not know. You understand what they do not know. It's like one says, I'm a Rasta, right? One says, they're a Rasta. And I say, what does Rastafari mean? They say, oh, it means head creator. I say, nah, it doesn't mean that. And then hark, it means, yeah, yeah, but what I heard. So they, they want to go on what they heard, but the sources, the information that they've heard was faulty. So they stay on this novice level. You understand? They stay at this novice degree. And they never get to this neophyte degree. They never get to the scholar degree where they are seeking, they're asking, seeking, knocking, where they're, where they're following. Because look at the key right here. This would be the follower of, of Christ. This would be the point of those who have heard, you know, those who were in the crowd, those who heard the parables. This would be those who now the mysteries were disclosed to them and they were working out their faith. You know, then when they get to the level of apostles, you understand know, when they get to the point of apostles, after the, the crucifixion, the death and resurrection of the attention of our Lord and Savior, when they get to the apostle level, you know, then the acts of the apostles, here we're seeing the fruition. Here we're seeing the working out. You see the working out of the faith. You understand? The working out of the faith. So this 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 that this, this right here is so very important because unfortunately most barely get to this level. They barely get to the level of true faith. You see what I'm saying? I mean true faith, mature faith, and the Bible calls it strong in faith. You see, because it says you can be weak in faith. So the, the, the weakened faith, or those of little faith, are between point, point A and point B, point one, step one, and step two. It's the weakened faith. Still, they're dealing with a lot of belief, or we can even call it unbelief. On a certain level, it is what you find in the scripture as unbelief, where Yeshua, he upbraided the Dekam as a Moritz, the disciples, for their lack of you understand, for their lack of belief, even the casting out of the demoniacs, says that, um, how be it that this kind goeth not out, except by prayer, what do you say, except by what? Prayer and fasting. And, and, and the better we apply this, the better we will pray and, 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 and fast and understand the true significance of fast. Fasting is not only from food, Though food is the, is the easiest and nearest carnal level example. In other words, if one does not gain mastery over food and, 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 and recognize the importance, the spiritual importance of fasting, their spirituality will be very, will be very weak. In other words, they will be those of either unbelief or those of OE of little faith. So, a little faith of those who just hear. Like, if you're just listening to these messages and you're not actively studying and, and making time, people say, I have to find time. No, you have to make time. You have to take time. You'll think you have to take time. Because don't you have a question about this? Don't, it doesn't, doesn't any question come to mind? Like, well, I don't know if what he's saying is true. If what he's saying sounds true, but how do I know for myself? You understand? He can explain it for himself. You understand? But can I explain it from what I know? Am I am I am I um convinced in that sense? I'm persuaded, Yogas. And whether we take strong steps in the faith or weak steps in the faith, it all depends on the on the measure or the quality of our faith. That's not about what God is doing or what Jah is doing. You understand? It's about what we are doing in that relationship, in that, in that, in that response. This is why repenting, having a change of mind, being born again, 
know, denying oneself, um, taking up one's cross, and, and, and following Christ. You, you see how that comes down to another um, five, five step or five point, which is the number of fingers on the hand, and the hand is like the yod or the yod, the right hand of the Lord, that first things first is, is repenting, right? It's repent. The first word is repent, right? Repent, which means to have a change of mind, you know, and concerning the teaching of God, concerning the reality of Christ, concerning one's true state, you understand, know, and the true state of, of the surroundings of the world. So the first thing is, 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 is to repent. Secondly, is to be born again. You see, secondly, is to be born again, the repentance. Right, that change of mind leads to that rebirth. Now, in the rebirth, there's symbolic baptism by water, but there's a deeper level of baptism. In fact, going to this point of meditation in order, from the hearing of it, to the reading of it, to the studying of it, to the memorizing of it, to the meditating of it, is the true washing with the water, washing with the word like water. You understand? That's the true baptism. You know, then on the, on this true um, esoteric, on the exoteric level, baptism is the outer level of bathing and baptizing in water. And, and there is a positive step to that. There's a positive application of that. But it doesn't stop there. You know, then it's first of all addressing the, the outer level or the physical level, the flesh level, in order to... to shock or stimulate the, the spiritual side. So we have this duality. We have our human nature and we have the divine nature that we only truly get in and through our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach. The, the, the living testimony, the living application of His Word. So I point this out right here, and I, and I hope that one understands this, and one might say, well, how is this connected to the Hukotai? But it, it's very clear how this is connected to the Hukotai, and we're going to get into that hopefully in a moment. Now, who's that verse 3? So verse 3, St. John chapter 17, verse 3, says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee. So, so Yeshua, let's, let's, understand, let's understand this. Yeshua, the Son, the Weld, is saying concerning the Ab or the Abba, saying concerning our Father. He's saying, and this is life eternal. Life eternal. Because he says that he has given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou, so as many as the Father has given to the Son, he has the the, the, the right to give them eternal life. And then he explains in verse 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee. So, so life eternal is the knowledge of the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, that means that there, there are the gods, yeah. But are they true gods? That they might know who? Thee. And who is thee? The only true God. The only true God and, and, get this, and, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, whom thou hast sent. This, this is the key right there, is, is the gaining of eternal life, right, because we have been given to the Son, you know what I'm saying, we as Rastafari, as true Rastafari have been given to the Son of the true God and Father, we've been given to the Son, and we've been given life eternal, so that we might do what? No, the only true God, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now this is very key as we speak on the Shema, you know what I'm saying, the Shema, the Shema of Deuteronomy 6 and 4, 
you can put that in here. We haven't gotten to the book of Deuteronomy, but we're approaching the book, the book of Devarim, or Orit, Zedagim, coming up. In fact, we're about to conclude this particular, this particular portion, um, by Yikra, right, by Yikra, and we're concluding this right here, right now. Now, why did, why did I decide to segue, in other words, go through this again? Because I think it's very important to um, remind and to be reminded of it. You know, and reminded of what it is that we can do on a daily basis. You understand? Know, in order to truly grow in accordance with His Word, in accordance with the, the covenant and the relationship. You understand? Know, so that we can reclaim and preserve our birthright. But moreover, so we can work out our faith. So we can be able to do both individually and collectively that which is in accordance with what pleases the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And see, when He is pleased, you understand, then our prayers, our prayers, which are according to His will, are answered. You understand. So, in saying that, I want to just kind of connect that right there. And saying that we're gonna to move to Behukotai. Behukotai or Behakatai. Behakatai. In Amharic we have the word Tig. Tig. Tig means law. Now in Hebrew we have the word hok, hok or hak in the Arabic, which means hak like to say truth. Here the word huk in Behukotai, right? means by my decrees, by my decrees. Now, when we go to the 33rd weekly Torah portion, right, let's go to the 33rd weekly Torah portion, and it's uh, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 20, chapter 26 and 3, 26 and 3. Now, turn your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 26 and 3. And once again, I, I got to highly advise ones and ones. I know there's many different kinds of Bibles out there before I said the disciples, the Schofield um, reference and study Bible. Yes, we have it at our website, www.lojsociety.org. You can freely download it, use it like that. But if you can, get a hard copy. I, I think it's a, it's a well worth investment for one's um, um, personal and family. Um, Bible studies and, and as a as a reference point because it gives a lot of details based on the scriptures that that helps us if we truly are hearing the word reading the word and we come to the point of studying the word for many read it but now this is a study Bible and the study reference and the notes they help us you know since both to understand and comprehend um, the context of what's being said in the application and, and the history, mystery, and prophecy of it, but also when we start to now memorize, we're memorizing in connection, dividing the scriptures, you understand, with the scriptures. Study and show thyself approved to God as a what work man, as a co-laborer that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This means rightly applying the scriptures, rightly comparing the scripture with the scripture. So as disciples, as you grow in your discipleship study, remember the discipleship is this point of faith with knowledge and working out one's salvation. You know what I'm saying? Practicing this, hearing the word. And you think you hear somebody speak on the Bible, well then you go and seek to read up on what they what they were speaking about, right? And then as you read up on it so you can really know what sounds good, well then study it. Study it, right? Study it. Now when you find that this is true, and then commit this to your memory. Recall this to mind. And what better time but to remember the Shabbat, to remember the Sendet, and keep it set apart. So those things of God, you know, the, the Sabbath is a time of meditation and reflection. You know what I'm saying? Thanks and praise. And, and just in rest, it was made for man, for humanity. Humanity was not made for the Sabbath. So we have meditation. Meditate upon the word day and night. That means hearing it, reading it, studying it, 
Submitting it to heart and mind. This is the fourth level. This squares it off. Committing it to heart and mind. So then when we start to meditate on it, we have a good foundation. You see, this, this provides a good foundation right here. And then when we use this right here, it's a basic neophyte, newcomer, disciple. You understand? Know and here's where the disciple becomes as their master. You understand? Know it's the fruition. You understand? Know that means that not only do you recall when you were in a state of belief or unbelief or opinion and maybe zeal and ignorance, but now you recognize when you started to gain the knowledge and then apply apply the science, apply the gnosis, apply what you know. In other words, doing, not being a forgetful hearer of the word, but a doer. You know and a doer comes to this fruition or this fruitfulness. Some 30%, you know what I'm saying? Some 60%, some 100%. This is according to the teaching of Yeshua. You know and those of us who have experienced the word, we say our woe and our name. It is true. But each of y'all have to be able to say it from your own um, experience and witness. This is so much a key. And what I'm really trying to encourage ones is as ones move forward and to move forward and to progress so that ones can know the truth for themselves. That one can know the truth for themselves. Because when we all know the truth for ourselves, then we'll be able to really address these other things that we need to do and be able to work together. See, the faith helps to unite us as well. Now, this 33rd weekly Torah portion part of Shah. In um, Leviticus, um, it, it is constituted from Leviticus chapter 26 and 3 to the end. So in chapter 26 and 3, it speaks on the conditions of barakat, the conditions of blessing. Verse 3, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 3. And, um, and it reads, If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. See, shall yield their fruit. So he says this very, very clearly and very plainly, right? Very clearly and very plainly. Now here in, in, um, in King James. It says, if you walk in my statutes, statutes, here in, in, in our Vayikra, page 434, it says, by my decrees, Bamarinya, if you look at the chart here, the um, Sabbath house reading, verse 33, it says, that Besur Ate, Besur Ate, Sarat, we spoke about Sarat before, right? You recall Sarat? You can probably go in the videos and look up um, order, ordinance, you understand? Order and ordinance, Seder. I think we spoke on it connecting it um, with the word Seder. Some of you know the Passover, Seder. Some think of Seder as a dinner, but it's, it's really a particular order. You understand? A particular ordinance that provides an order. Some can consider it a ceremony. It, there's a ceremonial sense to it. Legally speaking, we know that there are statutes. You understand? These are also additional regulations. You understand? So what he's saying here when he says Behukotai is the key when we look at when we look at this from the Afro Shemitic. Right? If we break down this Hebrew here, this word talk here, right? We have the word word hak, right? From from Arabic, and then we have the word hug from Amharic. 
It's just breaking down the mass already. Now, in the Amharic, we have Sur'at or Shur'at. Now, what is the difference between Shur'at, Sur'at, and Shur'at? If you recall, in the Schofield Study Bible, when we go to chapter um, 20, which has the command, there was a footnote that broke down that the Mosaic Covenant given to Israel in three divisions are essential to the others, and together forming the Mosaic al Kidan or the Mosaic Word Agreement, the Mosaic Covenant, vis-a-vis -vis the commandments expressing the righteous will of Jah. So the commandments, the ten words, or the commandments, his command, it expresses the righteous, this key word again, the Siddic, the Sadic, the Siddic, the Zadok, the righteous will. You understand? Make our wills obedient to good influence, to God's influence, through the commandments, expressing the righteous will of God. Then we have the judgment, which governs the social life of Israel. In other words, the judgment is what governs the society. And what governs the social network of Israel, therefore the social network or the social life of Ras, the Sari of true Ethiopian Hebrews. And thirdly, we have the ordinance. Here we have the word Sir'at or Shur'at, statute. It's also translated, ordinance sometimes is translated as statutes, right? Statutes. And the ordinance, they govern the religious life of Israel or the spiritual life of we Ethiopian Hebrews are governed by the Sarat. So now we have Sarat Besharate in the in the um, revised and hard Bible, Hamas Book of the Seven Seals. But now here in the Masoretic we have the Hukotai or the Hakate the Hige the Higatai the Higatai, right? which is an interesting um, etymological link with the Masoretic here, right? But we think that the Masoretic right here perhaps is, is, is um, a later revision or redaction of the original Ethiopic. But these three elements, let's remember, the commandment, the judgment, and the ordinance, these three elements, they form what is called the law. Now, Balmerinya, the law is this hug, this hug, the hug, which is a variation of hak, the Arabic hak, and the Hebraic huk, right? Huk. So we're seeing that this is linking with the law, but particularly what's spoken of here is the religious life. Now, as we go on, it says right here, um, it's speaking about the blessings of the land that we would have. Right? Um, the conditions of the barakat, the conditions of the blessing. But there's also a warning, and it's warnings of chastisement. Now, in the Schofield Study Bible, chapter 26, it has a subscription 2, and the footnote says that chapters 26, chapter 26, should be read in connection with Deuteronomy chapter XXVIII, which would be 28, 28, 29, and 30 of Deuteronomy. And this is called the Palestinian, or the Philistine Kal Kidan, or the Palestinian Word Agreement, the Palestinian Covenant. So for the diligent disciples, that's the portion right there, you heard it. That's the portion to read and study the connection between chapter 26, uh, Leviticus 26, and Deuteronomy 28, 29, and, um, and, and 30. Now, with that being said, let us get an overview right here. Now, we know that's a double portion, and we've addressed that right there. Basically, there's two main summaries here. One is the blessing, the barakat, and the curses, right? The blessings for obedience, for hearing, for shema, and the curses for 
disobedience or not hearing. Because if you hear, then you hear, you must read, right? And then in reading, hearing and reading to figure it out, you have to study. Now once you study it, you have to commit the truth of it. You shall know the truth to heart and mind. This is the memorization, and the exercise, the tithing. We can call this the tithing of that 10%. You can the tithing of our mind state. Then we can meditate upon it day and night. And this is when you get to the level of meditation, especially when it's in this order, when it's in the true order, then one truly is, is dealing with spiritual power. You understand? And it was one that's is truly operating in true spirituality when it's in this particular order. Often ones will say they're meditating something, but they have no foundation. There's no foundation. They have not heard the word. They have not read the word. They have not studied the word. And they have no memory. They have not memorized the word. See, when we memorize the word, it's like downloading it on a certain level. But it's like rewriting. You understand? Rewriting our operating software. You understand? And when we re rewrite our operating software, we also are giving out certain viruses certain things that we heard, certain things that we have believed. In other words, it's weeding, it's weeding this part, this part out right there, right? It's, it's weeding out the unbelief, you know, weeding out the ignorance, coming to that knowledge. Then, now here is that application when it says, if he do what? If he walk. Notice what it says, if he walk. It doesn't say if you believe, but if you halaka, halaka or the akahe. If you progress in my spiritual order, that's, that's what this part, the Hukotai is. If you progress, which is the concluding portion of the book of Vayikra, you understand? Or the Hebrew book of Leviticus, or Rit the Lewawiyan. Now, Jah had promised that if the Israelites, the Beta Israel, if they followed Jah's law, that Jah would bless Israel with rains in their season, abundant harvest, peace, victory over enemies, fertility, and God's presence. Now here's the interesting thing, is you know there's the link between the true Beit Israel and Ethiopia, biblically, prophetically, from the very time of Moshe, Moses, we have where, where Jah wants to destroy the people because the golden calf and Jah said to Moses, I will make a great nation out of you. And yet, Moses' wife was an Ethiopian, and he was a Hebrew, so he was already um, forth showing us that Ethiopian-Hebrew connection, even from there. But Moses, he, 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 he um, prayed to Jah to relent on that, so that wasn't done. There, then. But John, when John says that, get out my way, let me destroy this people, I'll make a great nation out of you. It is similar to what he says with Abraham at the same time, how he would make a great nation out of Abraham. And we know that that is a reality. You understand the full truth of that. The true truth of that is a reality. Now, when we get to Amos 9 and 7, there's a connection to Ezekiel. We know it in the psalm. Prophetically, in the Psalm, the Kibbutz, and the Gash, the Old Testament, we can't even read that within some of the Masoretic Ketubim uh, concerning, like, um, uh, uh, Samuels and, and, and the Kings, and also Chronicles. There are certain inconsistencies, the Old Testament, found within the Hebraic that makes you know there's more to this. It even refers to different books. Now, the Kibbutz, and the Gash, is an important witness and a testimony. But not just only the Kippur and the guests, the real, you know, the real culture of Ethiopia, our divine heritage, is a testimony to that al Kidan, to that holy covenant relationship between Israel, biblical Israel, and biblical Ethiopia. Right? Now, why I mention that is because the same, therefore the same, if the same al Kidan applies according to John's word. I, have, have I not said you are like the children of the Ethiopian unto me, O children of Israel? 
So he clearly applies it. That, therefore, when we look at the events of Armageddon 1974, Ethiopia, great transgression, creeping coup against the elect of God, the King of Kings. It becomes very clear the famines, right? It becomes very clear the rains, you know, irregular rains in the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia, you understand the lack of abundant harvest, harvest being less, far less than than previously under the monarchy, under the King of Kings. Um, peace, you understand, that region has not known a, a decade of peace, you understand, since the time of his imperial match, the Zemena, Nabusa, and the Gas, victory over enemies, you understand, we, we don't see that happening to the Kievas Ethiopians, fertility, you understand, the birth rate of Ethiopians also ha have dropped off, both at home and in the diaspora as well. Many Ethiopians are so confused about these fertility issues that they don't even want to have children. You understand? So we, we, we look, remember, in God's presence, now that's the key thing right there, in God's presence. You see, the real crimes with 1974-75 Ethiopia was not just against His Majesty, it was against God. It was against the Al Kidan. You understand? It was against God. Now, Leviticus 26, uh, verses 3 to 14 points that part out. But if the Beta Israel did not observe Jah's commandment, as we've been saying, that Jah would wreck upon Israel misery. Has Ethiopia seen misery, you understand, or happiness since 1974 75? Consumption. Fever, stolen harvest. Look how much land has has been lost in in Ethiopia. Even to the so-called native Ethiopians. Look what's going on with the land and the harvest. Defeat by enemies. Defeat by enemies. Poor harvest. Attacks of wild beasts. Pestilence. Famine. Desolation. And get this. The last one. Timidity. Timidity among so called careless Ethiopian, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 15 to 38. Now, those who survive would be removed to the land of their enemies. Now, we know that historically speaking, this is speaking of the lost sheep, but it's also showing of John's righteousness and his righteous indignation or his judgment, you understand, when his righteousness and his righteous will is violated. So it speaks now to us as the Ethiopian Hebrews or the once lost but now found black sheep of the Beta Israel and our people, ancestors, and those who survived would be removed to the land of their enemies. But we also have the same sort of situation happening with the careless Ethiopians. Many of them are in England and Europe and the Americas. Believe it or not, the land of their enemies, where they would become heart sick over their iniquity. And this is confess their sin and atone. That's that's the good news there. You understand? That's that's what we pray for, that's what we labor, this labor of love is for Ethiopians to recognize, hey, there's there's truth to that right there. You, you understand? And there's a way out of this as well even though it has been almost gone on 40 years. Leviticus 26, verses 39 to 41. Now, Jah promised then to remember Jah's covenant or, or, or God's covenant with Jacob, Isaac, Abraham, and the ancients whom God freed from Egypt. He says that he would remember his, his Kal Kidan. Leviticus 26, 42 to 45. Now, that's the part that concerns the blessing and curse. As we know, that needs to be read in connection with chapter 20, 28, 29, and 30 of Deuteronomy. Now, furthermore, on the payment of vows, which is the next, you know, the next um, portion of this is on the payment of vows. I think we're going to pour this for a course, clear the board, give the students an opportunity to take this down right here.
So we see, we began off with, with John chapter 17. You understand? The knowledge of the truth. Not knowledge of good and evil, but the knowledge of the truth. You understand? And, and they show an eternal life being that knowledge of the, of the true God, of Abba, Ababa, Ababa, Abba Kedus, Abba, Father, Kedus, Abba Tajan, and Jesus Christos, whom he has sent to us. There we have, when we look at Old Testament, Deuteronomy 6, 4, the Shema, New Testament, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 37. The Ethiopian eunuch, he was a Hebrew, and then he was returning from the, the high holiday of Fasica, of Pesach. He was reading, reading, notice, he heard about this, but now he was reading, you understand, Isaiah, Yeshayahu, the prophet, concerning Yeshua. So he was reading and studying this, right? And obviously, what he learned from Philip, he had committed to memory. We see him in great joy, praising God. And his meditations, I'm sure, were sweet. So I point out the Ethiopian eunuch because the Ethiopian eunuch is that classic case. There for us in the faith to understand our Judaic and, and the Christian or the Tawahido, you understand the Tawahido of, of the two as one. In fact, that's a, that's a scribe I'm working on right now. Took a couple of days off from the vid to actually work on a couple of um, scribes in order to help strengthen you all, brothers and sisters in, in, in the faith, on certain, certain key points and everything. It's still a work in progress. We're going to continue with the second part of this right here, on the next part, this is the second part, we 33 right here, part of the Hukotai. Please remember this right here. This is very, very important to get a good, a good grip, a good grasp of this, so one can, can um, rate their progress, you understand? Rate their progress, their walk, that key word, walk. If Notice that conditional, if ye walk, if ye walk in my statutes, the hukotai, the hukotai, if we walk the surate, do we walk in his religious spiritual ordinances, which is Torah, you know which is which is based on the Torah, but fulfilled in he whom he has sent, Yeshua Ha Moshia our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. So, the next portion of this is dealing with more the vow. I think we need to understand um, vow, right? Vow in a, in, a, um, in, a, in a better light. Now, before we finish up on this, this portion right here, because there's a lot of other things that are contained in this portion, but to keep this in tune with what we're teaching presently um, with the discipleship and with the ministry, the Haftara or the Nabiya, the prophetical portion um, of, for the Pasha, Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 19 to Jeremiah 17 and 14. The blessing and curses in Leviticus 26 are matched, they are matched by a curse on, quote, the man that trusts in man, and it was a man that trusts in flesh. Notice what we began off with in John 17, where it says that he has been given power or authority over all flesh. You understand? So we we're, we're not trusting in, in in man. You understand? But the Son of God. You know, the Son of God to the glory of His Father, our Father, His God, our God, in spirit and in truth. The man that trusts in man is cursed in Jeremiah 17 and 5. And there's a blessing now, a barakat on the man, the human being, the male or female who trusts in Yahweh, who trusts in Jah, who trusts in the Lord, if you please, in Adoni and Adonai. This is, this is so key right here. So we see this contrast here. 
in Jeremiah chapter 17 also should be um, meditated on in this um, sabbatical week that is a double portion, the Har and the Hukotai. Shalom Rastafari. Stay tuned. More to come. Yah woman. Shalom.